So I was going to work through a problem um, that I found, not in our textbook, but in a slightly different one, about the power of a suction cup. And if we had a some type of ceiling surface that had a suction cup um, attached to the top, it looks something like this. Um, and essentially the way a suction cup works is that we kind of at least can approximate, we don't evacuate all of the air from behind the suction cup, but if we can approximate like, well let's say for instance if we had all of the air um, that previously was in the suction cup that was removed and so we basically had a vacuum inside here, so a place where the, the pressure was going to be equal to zero inside the suction cup and outside we had atmospheric pressure, all right, 1.01 uh, times 10 to the fifth Pascals. So you might be able to hear my son singing in the background, by the way, so I apologize for that. Um, if we assume that we had some type of uh, a radius here of something like uh, just even five centimeters, um, how much force could we, if we attach some type of, of hanging object, some type of block, or maybe a, a really, a, well, let's think of something cool that we might actually want to hang on the ceiling. How about an, an airplane? Uh, we had a really nice model airplane that we wanted to hang up, um, and so this is going to be an atrocious drawing, of course. Um, there we go. So here's our airplane. Um, it has big engines. And it's, um, there's a wing on the other side, too. We want to hang this up. We want to know how massive of an airplane we can actually hold up using just this suction cup. <coughs> so how would we do that, right? We want to know, uh, this is a, really just a, a static equilibrium problem in a lot of ways. We have something that we're trying to hold up that we don't want it to accelerate downward or upward. And so we need to figure out a, what, how we can, um, we, we need to figure out how much force, um, or the, the gravitational force can, what do I want to say, the best way to say this. We want to know the maximum amount of gravitational force that uh, this suction cup can withstand. So that means basically that we need to write down uh, the net uh, Newton's second law, the net forces acting on this suction cup, or even we could talk about maybe like on the wire here, uh, as being equal to zero because we don't want this to accelerate upward or downward. So we know that the gravitational force here is going uh, down. So that is, um, we can, let's choose up to be positive. Oops. We'll choose up to be positive. Uh, positive y direction. So um, the force pulling up on this particular rope is the force due to this external pressure here. We have um, the pressure on the outside here, P naught, uh, times whatever the area is, is going to be equal to the force that's applied um, by the suction cup. That the amount, well it's actually not applied by the suction cup, it's being applied by the atmosphere. And we have some type of atmospheric pressure here on the outside, there is no pressure on the inside, and so the force that is applied on this suction cup that's holding this up, that's being um, applied by basically the air around the suction cup onto this surface is equal to the pressure at that point times the surface area. So <clears throat> although there's a little bit of extra surface area here, um, let's just assume this whole thing is basically one big circle. So it, it acts basically as a whole circular surface that we need to calculate. And if it has a radius of five centimeters, we can figure out what that area is pretty easily. So the force that's applied um, by the atmospheric pressure on the suction cup is going to be equal to the, um, the atmospheric pressure, this is in Pascals, times the area um, and the area here is going to be pi r squared, so 0 0.05, pi times 0 0.05 squared, can't quite see that, and so that, that's our, our force acting on that, and that's going to be uh, in the upward direction, right, it's, it's pushing up in this case, uh, the atmospheric, uh, any t pressure can apply a force in any direction as long as we know what the, the surface area is. Um, we have 1.01 times 10 to the fifth pascals times pi times 0 0.05, that should be meters squared, and that is in the upward direction, so that's positive, and then subtracting the weight of this airplane coming down, which is whatever its mass is times gra gravitational pull, and that's going to be equal to zero. So now we can simply just solve for our mass, right? We, our mass is going to be equal to this quantity, uh, 1.01, um, let's see, that'd be 
minus 1.01 .01 times 10 to the fifth pascals, which is just newtons divided by meters squared times pi times 0 0.05 meters squared, uh, divided by, here's a minus sign, so we divide by minus g. So that's just going to, we can, for g, let's just use 10 meters per second squared. And we can solve this all through, obviously our minus signs are going to drop out. Um, and we can see something about our units. Our, this is going to be meters squared, so meters squared cancels meters squared here. And this is newtons, which is kilogram meters per second squared. The meters per second squared drops out, and we're just going to get units of kilograms. And then we could actually solve this quantity pretty easily and figure out what that numerical value is. And I'll try to do that real quickly on my, my iPod to figure out what that value is going to be. Okay, so that's going to be, let's clear this out. That's going to be 10100. That's 1.01 times 10 to the fifth times 0.05 squared equals 25.25 times pi, which I think I have a value for pi on here. Yep, pi is 79 divided by 10. Okay, so I think I hit multiply. Whoa, okay, I think I screwed up my calculation. Let's try that one more time. Big fingers. There we go. Times pi times 0.05 squared and then divided by 10. There we go, that's what I thought. 7.93 kilograms. All right, so there's our, our mass. That's the maximum mass that this suction cup could hold up. And you could see, well, what would happen if we had a slightly bigger suction cup? Well, if we had a bigger suction cup, then we would have the, um, the same amount of pressure, but the force would be larger because our area would be larger. And as we got this to be larger and larger, um, we'd simply just have, we'd be able to um, hold up a larger mass as we continue to increase the size of our suction cup. So there's a pretty simple little problem, um, and hopefully that's informative. Sorry for all of the mistakes.